What did you want to be when you grew up? Was it a teacher or a nurse? Or maybe something in a more male-dominated industry, like a police officer or president of the United States? Did you give up on the dream or did you go for it despite the obstacles? Well, today we're gonna to meet our sixth phenomenal woman winner, Ruth Farmer. She has made a career out of mentoring young women who want careers in more male-dominated industries. So tell me a little bit more about what you do. I'm Director of Strategic Initiatives at the National Center for Women in Information Technology, which is a nonprofit um, coalition, a learning community of 450 different organizations working together to increase women's meaningful participation in computing and IT. Why do you think it's necessary to have a program like that? Well, most people don't realize this, but women's participation in computing has actually declined, um, whereas all other STEM disciplines, women's participation has either stayed the same or increased over the last um, couple of decades. So we're really worried about, one, the fact that women aren't contributing to the design of technology, mm -hmm. um, that women's voices are not part of the new um, digital world that we're all creating, mm -hmm. and um, Bottom line is there's a workforce problem. There's 1.4 million new jobs projected and the U.S. pipeline will fill 30% of them. So the easiest group of people for us to access to put into these jobs are the 56% of college students that are women, but only 18% of computer science students are women. If we could just double the number of women taking computer science, we could fill this gap. So why are women not pursuing these technical degrees? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, one, there really isn't much computer science available. Um, in the schools. So they're not getting introduced to it. Um, two, it's a really male-dominated environment. And so if you imagine you're 14 and you're going to walk into a classroom that's 80% boys, are you going to stick that out? Is, um, is that going to be something you feel welcome in? We've been working on this issue and looking at the experiences that girls have, and I really kind of liken it to it's an obstacle course. It's an obstacle course of a completely male-dominated classroom, followed by this sort of headwind of the media image of technology, followed by um, this push-pull peer pressure that you're pushed out by this male environment and then you're pulled out by the fact that all of your peers, other girls, are doing other things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the bottom line is we need young women in technology. And the fact that less than five to seven percent of high schools are offering computer science courses. Only about 4,000 girls took AP computer science last year. So Ruth, what do you think the solution is? I really um, think we've found something. So the program I run is called Aspirations in Computing and it's about finding and identifying girls who have um, potential and aptitude and aspirations in technology recognizing them and then providing them with a community of peer support to propel them along this path and um, connect them with other girls like them, connect them with opportunities to intern, opportunities to do technical projects to build their resumes and um, provide them with a network that they can draw on for support. Ruth, are you tech savvy and how did you become interested in this? I am not officially a technical person. I would say I'm tech savvy, but I'm not a I'm not an engineer, but I manufacture engineers, I like to say. So I um, was in college and I took a course on rhetoric of women and was learning about all these women, female role models that I'd never heard of, which I thought was astonishing that at age 19, I'd never learned about Sojourner Truth or really understood who Susan B. Anthony was and what she had contributed. And so that was kind of what sparked my interest in gender. and. Um, I'd always wanted to be an architect. I thought that I wanted to um, design buildings and homes. I wanted to be in a creative field. And so I really didn't think I could do the math. When I went um, to college, I got excited about gender equity. And then when I landed at the Girl Scouts later in a program position, um, a grant fell into my lap that was from Intel to um, do engineering education for middle school girls. So I went down that path and um, I've been doing this now for 12 years. I've been 100% dedicated to empowering girls and women in engineering and technology. Central to ULA is the idea that they want to empower women to be all they can be. In fact, their tagline is, feeling beautiful is empowering. 
How does that fit into your life? I travel a lot. I'm all over the country speaking and presenting and talking to groups about this issue. And so for me, having a wardrobe that I can just throw on and I can feel good and I can feel strong is really important. And um, people are always astonished at how small my suitcase is. I've gotten it down to a science where I've got a certain set of key pieces that I know make me feel good and make me feel strong and I can throw them together in different ways, go from day to night. and. Um, People are always really impressed with my tiny little suitcase. So how do you feel about being a full-figured woman? You know, I feel like I'm a woman and I do all the things that women do and I buy clothes, I travel, I bike, I hike, I do anything that I want and, um, and I think that women shouldn't have to be defined by their appearance. It takes a role model to be a role model and I think you can certainly agree that women like Ruth Farmer embody what it means to be a role model, a woman who defies expectations. This is Alexandra Bose with Ula Popkin.